sovereign debt crisis in Europe is causing credit market conditions to tighten. Our next guest says that the primary way that Europe is impacting the U.S. is through risk aversion and that markets are trading as if there is significant liquidity fear around the corner. Guy Laba joins us now. He is chief fixed income strategist at Janney Montgomery Scott. Guy, welcome back to Bloomberg News. Always good to have you on. Thanks, Mark. Guy, the psychology of what is going on in Europe uh, probably took a hit last week because of words by that uh, official in Hungary that they could be having some financing problems. And then we heard from David Cameron, the new prime minister of Great Britain, saying that the pain is going to have to be shared, that when he came into office, he didn't realize that things were as bad as they were. How bad are things? Well, I think that really depends on the specific country we're talking about. And as Hungary's pretty quickly developing woes might suggest, this sort of situation is really more about contagion and concern rather than underlying fundamentals. And I think there, there's evidence, again, in how quickly spreads on these countries' debt, spreads on these countries' credit default swaps can widen out, that it's more about fear than it is fundamental. Well, talk to me then, because then you use the word contagion. This is something that could affect even creditworthy companies, correct? They might not be able to issue debt. Well, absolutely. And here in the U.S., we track something very closely called the LIBOR OIS spread. Mm -hmm. And this spread gives us a good indication of how expensive or how willing banks are to loan companies funds. And by proxy, how easy it is for companies to issue new debt. Now, a creditworthy company these days is forced to pay a very high cost to issue new debt because the broader markets are very sort of in a state of heightened fear, heightened risk aversion. And that's exhibited in the high level of this LIBOR OIS spread. Well, uh, Guy, let's, let's go back and, and talk about Hungary a little bit more because you have conflicting signals coming out of Hungary. Our uh, David Tweed was telling us that uh, he was reporting from Luxembourg earlier today that you have on the one hand, there was one official who came out and made a dire prediction about the state of Hungary's economy, and then that was quickly refuted by some other members of the Hungarian government. How, how badly did that rattle European markets? Well, I think in this case, it's really more about words, again, than anything fundamental. I believe the comments last Friday were from a spokesperson for Hungary's new prime minister that a, de a de potential default is something we need to think about, words to that effect. And the mere mention of that phrase, the indication that investors have to be, have something to be concerned about, was enough to drive the markets pretty much wild on Friday. A and I think the fact that we're seeing sort of a more reasoned heads, or more cool heads prevail today, is at least a relatively positive positive side for the broader markets. Guy, talk to me then about the markets here. Uh, investors, should they be concerned about what's going on in, in, the, in the European Union? Should they be concerned about the sovereign debt crisis that's affecting so many countries there? Absolutely. And, and I think one of the things about sovereign debt crises in general that we tend to forget is that they're resolved over the course of months and years. It's not something that's going to fix itself within a couple of days. So here in the U.S., investors really need to be prepared for elevated market volatility, not just in interest rates, but also corporate bonds and stocks as well, for a period that could very well last months to even years. Yep. And Guy, uh, credit markets, are they closed to companies that want to sell junk bonds? Right now, the credit markets are very, very tight for some of the less well-known issuers. If you're a major well-known issuer, even if you have a lower credit rating, for example, maybe a pipeline company that has billions of dollars of bonds outstanding, it's probably possible to come to market right now with a new issue. That'll be pretty expensive. Uh, but I think the real story here is that the markets aren't treating companies that aren't that well-known very favorably. And that could be a big issue for some of the smaller firms out there. Uh, talk to me then, if you would, quickly then uh, about what's been going on with the euro. We saw that at one 19 earlier. Does that give you cause for concern? Well, it certainly does. And to let you know, we have a fairly public call out there that we're expecting the demise of the euro, if you will, within the course of the next five years or so. The truth is that currencies that are broader than a single political unit really don't work out in the long term because they have conflicting sort of interests within the, Euro within the broader union. All right. Guy LeBob, fixed income strategist, Danny Montgomery Scott, joining us. Guy, always good to have you on. Thanks so much.